Wow! Welcome to yet another edition of Cook to Serve. And in Cook to Serve, we nourish not only the soul, but also the stomach. And we are in the kitchen of Dr. George. Karibu sana. Yes, and in Cook to Serve today, George has a very personal experience to share. Because the theme or the subject today is reaching out to the wounded soldier. Dr. George, you have worked with the security, with soldiers. What's your story? What's your background? How does it fit in today? You know, uh, every, every kingdom has an army. And every army has a responsibility to take care of the security of the citizens. And in every army, there is war that they are fighting. And uh, because the army, the, the main uh, aim is to make sure that they are doing whatever they are doing for the benefit of the community, for the security of the community, taking care of their own and making sure that they are secured. And so um, whenever they go to war, they are faced by different challenges, mm -hmm. including the enemy, including diseases, including uh, adverse weather. And you know, uh, in every war, there are casualties. And the, the wonderful experience that I have seen in the army is that when you go to war and a soldier is shot, that soldier is taken care of. Mm -hmm. When the soldier is sick and cannot be able to go to war, that soldier is taken care of. And even if the soldier dies and they are not very far from home, that soldier is actually uh, transported, repatriated back home. And if it's at uh, a place where they cannot be able to go back, then that soldier will be given a decent burial according to the setting and the status of that moment. And it is very important that the soldier is taken care of because that soldier, though wounded, is still a soldier. And so uh, it's, the, it's, it's, it's the same with our Christian life. In our Christian life, we are all at war. Remember, the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. It means there is a war, and where there is a war, there are casualties. And you know, Christianity has been looked at uh, by many people, and even sometimes ourselves, as the army that shoots its wounded. Mm -hmm. and sometimes discards its wounded. And it means that one aspect that we must be able to take care of is that in this walk, in this journey, it is not a, 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 a 100 meter dash, it's a marathon. And as we walk through this journey, many things happen. And so today, I want us to remember that we are all in a position of being casualties. Because when you go to war, you are fighting the enemy. And when the enemy, we do everything best. We put on the armor, we arm ourselves, we train ourselves, we study the enemy to know what uh, they are like. And then, uh, before we go to attack, we actually have to arm ourselves. But we have to remember that we will have the wounded. That is why we have medics mm -hmm. in the army. Yes. That is why we have researchers yes. in the army. That's why we have people working in the background and within the camp to make sure that every soldier is taken care of. No army wants to lose a soldier. Everyone wants to go and win. And so with that Christian faith, we need to remember that we are God's children, wounded or whole. But if someone is wounded, they need to re be reached out because they are still soldiers. And if every one of us is created in his image, yes. every one of us yes. matters. Every one of us counts. has a role to play and they count. Yes. Interesting because I would like us to look at it within the context of uh, those who may have backslid. Yes. Those are, are the wounded soldiers. 
the wounded soldiers. They have yes. a role to play. We all have a role to play. Yes. And, uh, and that's why they're called yes. backslidden Christians. Backslidden Christians, yes. Yes, they have the tag of Christ with them. Mm -hmm. They are the wounded soldiers. Mm -hmm. They are soldiers, despite the fact that they're wounded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and now in the context of... Uh, <laughs> of fish, <laughs> samaki. You yeah. know, it's very interesting <laughs> because uh, I didn't know mm. that uh, in the Bible there are over 50 Bible verses with reference to fish. Did you know that? Wow. Over did you, 50. Did you say 5-0? Five, 5-0. Zero? Five, zero. Over 50. Whoa. Wow. Indeed, um, very early. Mm. That uh, early in Jesus' ministry, mm. when uh, the first disciples that he recruited, so to speak, in terms of vocation, mm. their vocation were? They were fishermen. Fishermen. Whoa. <laughs> yes. Another reference in the Bible, mm. in feeding the 5,000, mm -hmm. we had how many loaves and fish? We had two fish and five loaves. And five loaves. Mm -hmm. Jesus, when he resurrected. Oh, just, just wait. You know, those uh -huh. two fish, actually, they collected 12 baskets of the remains. After, of yes. Whoa. They collected. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. And so there is uh, plenty of symbolism mm. uh, around the fish. Mm. And we also called upon to be fishers of men. Of men. Uh, and you were saying Jesus Christ, when he resurrected, he found Peter had gone back fishing. Uh, Peter and, and, and James, they had gone back to fish. And when they were coming ashore, they were tired in the morning. Guess what Jesus was preparing for them? Fish. <laughs> so, so today, uh, fish is in, uh, can be made in many forms. Yes. We have the whole fish from the lake. And by the way, watch out for that episode. We're going to have the whole uh, fish fresh from fresh the fish. lake. Yes. And... Uh, we're going to talk about the process of uh, uh, preparing it until it reaches a certain level. And now this one is fried fish. Mm -hmm. Remember, yes. it's fried, but it is still called what? Fish. fish. And so, and, 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 and a wounded soldier is like, you know, life can fry you. Mm -hmm. Remember when the, the previous episodes we say that in this journey, there are times you go through the, you scaling the mountains. The mountains up and also the valleys. And, and also we are fighting. Yes. So you can be wounded. Yes. You can fall into adultery. Mm -hmm. You can fall into fornication. Mm -hmm. You can fall into corruption. Mm -hmm. You can fall into lying. Mm -hmm. You know, you can fall into uh, deception. Right. And you can find yourself that you have been fried by life. And what does that mean? You are a wounded Christian. You are wounded. But you're still a Christian. Right. You are a fried fish, but it's still fish. Okay. So what do we have here today? You can take us through in terms of... Okay. So today we want to, want to prepare fish. Yes. Uh, and uh, we have the ingredients. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, uh, I usually, for fish, I spice it, mm -hmm. but not so much, but just to make sure that our palate is uh, stimulated. Yes. And so a little of, I'll put a little of black pepper, just a little of uh, turmeric, a little of paprika, a little of uh, cloves, and uh, a little of coriander, mm -hmm. a little bit of uh, ginger, and garlic powder. And today we're using garlic powder because my garlic, my pounded garlic is not mm -hmm. enough. Yes. You know, sometimes you have to have a contingency plan. Always. <laughs> plan B. <they> yes. <laughs> yeah. But it's still then, garlic. Yes. And then we have tomatoes as right. always. And you have onions. And then the main yes. layer. The fish. Fish. Fried fish. I notice also in terms of mixing and i think we'll have an oh, opportunity yeah. yeah what are the proportions how do you mix mm. there are those who does it make a difference yes when you now spice yes uh mix it together to be homogeneous yes. or do you add them separately yeah we will get into this but i notice also yes that you have a container yes the top uh, that you now as i said initially I, I usually use the top of the roiko mm -hmm. to mix my spices in small portions, it's, 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 it's really the, the skill of mixing it in small portions that brings the taste that is desired. Otherwise, you can use spices 
and it will still taste different, you know. You'll, you'll, you, you, you'll feel like maybe the, gla uh, the, the cloves are more, They're more overwhelming or, you're, you're, or subduing the others. Yeah, or, yes. the, or the, you're tasting more of the paprika or the mm -hmm. turmeric. But you need just to mix it in uh, little portions yes. so that um, you, you, it nicely, homogeneously mix okay. so that you actually just feel a nice taste. Okay. Yes. All right, take us through. We want to get to have a chat <laughs> with the main actor. Yes. So now um, the process is very simple and uh, it's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. So today, uh, I just, just before I start cooking, uh, I would like to say that today we will not use milk. Uh -huh. We will use water. Water yes. today. Yes. Okay. But yes. when you're doing your, your, your fish, you can use coconut milk, mm -hmm. you can use fresh milk, you can use maziwa mala, uh, sour mm -hmm. milk. Yes. You can use the traditional sour. You remember yes, the one, yes. the one that, oh. uh, from the guad? From the guad. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Similar to mursik. Yes. You can <laughs> also use that one uh -huh. uh, to, to, to make it um, nice. But for today, I think we will just use the normal soup water. Yes. Yes. To, 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 uh, but it will be nice. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, when you finally ultimately have the fish prepared, yes. what can be the accompaniments? Though today we're focusing on the fish. Ah, okay. So you can eat fish with ugali. Fish with ugali. You can eat fish with rice. Rice. You can eat fish with bread. Bread. Yeah. Uh, and other people can eat it with pancake, though. Mm -hmm. For me, that's all my preference. But you can eat it with pancake. Mm -hmm. You can eat with the uh, noodles if you want. Mm -hmm. But you have to be very careful of the bones. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and for some people, they don't do the whole fish. They get, uh, um, they get um, what do you call them? They, they get, um, they remove the bones and then they just get the chunks. Uh -huh. And they fry it, and now they can. It's, it's easy. Almost to like getting to be uh, fillet. Yes, the fillet. That's what I was yes, looking for. Fillet. <laughs> yes, fillet. Yeah, you can just just fillet, and that would be nice to go with the rice. Okay. And chapati as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and in the absence of those, you can have fish with fish. Fish. <laughs> Still okay. <laughs> yes. Still you can okay. enjoy your fish. <laughs> and, and 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 today, Edmond, yes. uh, we're going to talk not just about preparing fish, mm -hmm. but how to eat fish. I've, come, I've seen friends and uh, I have seen they waste a lot of fish. Mm -hmm. They throw away a lot of meat. I'm told so. it has uh, the engine. Yes. There is the main body compartment. Yes. There is the boot. We will yes. get to... And the, and, and the, the ice, the, the floodlights. The floodlights. <laughs> there's omega-3 somewhere. Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but there's there, the, the concentration is high. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes, yes. And indeed, because in our discussion today, we'll also delve into how do you take care of the wounded yes. soldiers. Yes. And uh, that's going to come in this program. So yeah. stay tuned. Thank you. So uh, as usual, we will have our saucepan, mm -hmm. sufria, and then we will add our vegetable oil as usual. And how much I notice you're not putting to be deep fried. It's just no, no, no. This is just for the onions uh -huh. and the tomatoes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll do we'll do the simple one, and I think uh, next time. Yes. We can actually do so that our viewers can see uh, what it what it looks like if you use the milk. Yes. And also, mm -hmm. we'll do the fresh ones. Wow. Yeah. So, so plenty. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. Yeah. So then... Uh, so I like to just warm when it starts yes. smoking slightly, then it is ready then for, for the, the onions to go in. Yes. Like now, it's ready. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> One onion is flying out of yeah. the frying pan. <laughs> to the fire. From the pan into the fire. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
so we can make it cook a bit. So as usual, after the onions, we do the garlic. So there is a sequence. Yes. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you remember what I told you about yes. assessing the when the onions when are it's just about to start ready. turning brown just beginning to start turning brown and uh, something else I say mm -hmm. um, if now they start like oh yes getting se separating. separating yes yes they are taking they are devolving to different corners of the saucepan excellent <laughs> yes. then you bring in the garlic to to bring, bring them, them together. together okay and tell them Behold how good it is when brothers dwell together in unity. Yes. For there the Lord commands a blessing. And indeed, when uh, you're alone, <laughs> you may go fast, but when you're together, <laughs> you'll walk far. You shall go far. Yes. I'm sure the garlic also wants to go far with yeah. the onions. <laughs> yeah. It does, the, the garlic is just waiting yes. to join the rest. Right. Mm. And it's so also with our Christian, uh, in our Christian life. Mm -hmm. There are those who start early. Yes. And there are those who come in along the race. And something that happens is when people have come in early, like the onions are the first to be in the soup area. Yes. When you're joining them, you're looking up to them. Mm -hmm. And we hold them in very high regard. Yes. And we think that they are not experiencing the heat mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the oil, the frying, yes. because we think they're used to and they have right. experience uh -huh. that they do not feel the heat. And so, because we hold them in high regard, mm -hmm. if, and, they are, and, and sometimes they are the leaders and they are on the top, sometimes when something happens to them, we so easily condemn them, mm -hmm. and we so easily like, uh, make them feel out of place mm -hmm. and wound them even further, you know. And you see, there is, there is something that I learned yeah. um, in, in, in one of my online Bible studies, yes. when we studied the book of uh, 2 Samuel 24. Mm -hmm. And this was when David the king of Israel, yes. the man after God's own heart, right. the friend of God, yes. uh, decided to count the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. He went against God's law. And uh, David was in high position. David was advised by his uh, commander of the army. He was the chief commander, yeah. but the commander of the army, Job, mm -hmm. remembered the word of the Lord and told David, my king, Everyone belongs to you. Yes. You don't need to count them. Oh, they all belong to you. Yes. Uh -huh. And if you just look, you will see. Because he didn't want yes. David to sin against the Lord. But at that point, David was short-sighted. At mm -hmm. that point, David had won many victories. Mm -hmm. And he just wanted to know how many people ah. he had. And so, David actually went against God's decree... Mm -hmm. that he was not supposed to count the children of Israel mm -hmm. until the Lord had said so. Yeah. And this was a great sin before the Lord. Right. And the Lord was very angry with him mm -hmm. that he decided now to punish the children of Israel. And he sent a prophet to David and said, now that you have sinned against me, what kind of punishment do you want? Wow. Should I let the enemies run over you? Mm -hmm. Should I let the arm of the Lord be on you? Should I let uh, a famine and, and, uh, come to you? Mm -hmm. But David said, I would rather fall into the hands of the Lord than into the hands of the enemy. Wow. A soldier would rather be reprimanded by his commander than fall in the arms of the enemy. The enemy. Mm -hmm. You get? Yes. And what happens to us when uh, Christians are wounded, and even especially the leaders, when we, uh, we would rather reprimand them mm -hmm. than throw them out there yes. to the enemy. Right. In that way, the, they know that it, it says uh, faithful are the wounds 
of a friend yes than the kiss from an enemy That's right. you know because at that point that person is who i mean your commander and the people in the fold mm -hmm. they understand that you are not their enemy and whatever has happened yes can happen to anyone, anyone at any point them. yes yes so uh when you become wounded mm -hmm. so what happened in if you if if someone will read second samuel chapter 24 yes is that the lord decided to reprimand the children of israel david through a plague mm -hmm. and about uh, a good number of the children of israel died but the lord had sent an army i mean an angel of death with a sword yes but david pleaded to god and said i have sinned against you one of the things that we need to help our wounded soldiers to realize is that you are wounded mm -hmm. and you cannot actually fight effectively effectively as you would when you're not wounded mm -hmm. so once they realize they are wounded we need to love them yes and by loving them we are giving them an opportunity to be able to like patch the wounds mm -hmm. yeah and when we give them the opportunity to open up to the wound then we actually tell them that this is going to be painful yes but you have to persevere because this is part of the process it. of correcting yes and this this leads me to the next uh, point i yes. imagine in how mm. so building in empathy how does empathy come in can you tell us in this process then so the empathy is trying to be in that person's shoe and the empathy comes in because we are not finished product uh -huh. we're work in progress yes whether you are you have been here for x number of years you are still uh you are still eligible to fall mm -hmm. that's why paul says be careful when you think you are standing it because you can you. easily tip over yes and most of the time for those who are standing they easily tip over because they become they think they are superheroes an experienced soldier sometimes can take stunts and uh, raid the enemy either as two or three people because they are experienced mm -hmm. but sometimes they go and they have serious the enemy runs them over and i like it's, that uh, like you say there anyone can actually fall so even those who are staunch christians they're those who start feeling we are betrayed like the pastors they can't fall like the pastors the yes. apostles the prophets mm -hmm. the teachers yes uh those in leadership they can easily fall yes and even those that are being led mm -hmm. can also fall mm -hmm. so we all have to remember that we are eligible as casualties at any point we are potential candidates for being casualties at None any point of our christian mean. walk yes and so it is important for us to make sure that we have a plan of mm. taking care of our wounded and on top of that plan is empathy mm -hmm. you put yourself in their own situation and most of the time when you put yourself in their situation you actually can be able to help them come out of it. and they can identify with you and in this yes. let's talk about patience yes some of us uh, have a challenge when it comes to patience mm. how does patience come in fast the biggest uh the biggest base for patience is love mm -hmm. if you love your fellow soldier if you realize that we are in it together and love is what binds us together mm -hmm. the love of god the love of christ the love that christ wants us to inherit his kingdom yes. is what binds us together mm -hmm. then we can wait yes remember christ said i will leave the 99 and go for the and one. go for the one and so going for the one is not like running and dashing and picking when you are looking for them mm -hmm. one and you've left the 99 you have to be patient yes be patient with the one that had gone astray mm -hmm. find out what happened 
mm -hmm. and slowly bring them back into the fold. And sometimes they can be wounded and they become stubborn. Mm -hmm. And I've seen this from experience. Like a soldier can be shot and they are giving up yes. hope. They themselves. They, yes, they're like, I, this, my, my, my injury is so much. Leave me alone. Let me just die. Mm -hmm. But then you who, you who is seeing is like, this soldier is not going to die. Right. So you take care of the wounds. Mm -hmm. You put an infusion. You, 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 you try and save the, them from losing blood. Then now you start to reach out to them mm -hmm. and bind their wounds. Mm -hmm. And it takes a while for a wound to heal. And de depending on the type of wound, it may take quite a number of days. And you have to be patient. Indeed, uh, what comes to play then is uh, being persistent. Yes. Uh -huh. So persistence is a key ingredient. Yes. You have to persistently pursue mm -hmm. those who are lost, mm -hmm. those who are backslidden, the wounded soldiers. You have to persistently pursue them. And you have to persistently love them. Mm -hmm. And you have to persistently reach out to them. So we're putting now our spice. spice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here you're stirring, mixing. Mixing it. Making it homogeneous. <laughs> yes, uh -huh. making sure that the love and unity mm -hmm. and harmony and peace yes. is in place in amongst the spice and the key thing just to recap in terms of persistence it, it then speaks to not giving up yes mm -hmm. yeah because because remember the other person is wounded they are sick mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you are the well one here yes so you have to be patient with them mm -hmm. you have to be persistent mm -hmm. you have to persevere mm -hmm. through them mm -hmm. and then also encourage them to persevere through that point yes. to the process that they are completely healed right a wound, when it's fresh, it's very painful. Yes. But as days go by, as it starts to heal, yes. the pain fades away. Mm -hmm. So, Edmond, this is now where we uh -huh. add the water. The water. And the water, is it warm or cold, or does it make a difference? It doesn't make a difference. Uh -huh. Yeah. And how uh, much water? It's the soup, the kind of soup you want. Uh -huh. How thick you want it to be. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so... Still stirring as you're pouring in the water. Yes. Getting it to mix. Mm. Mm -hmm. Then you dip your fish. Uh huh. <laughs> and there is something. This is, this is the simplest way. Yes. To do it. Uh huh. Then now you dip your fish. There is something which I noticed in the beginning. <laughs> You measured the biggest fish. <laughs> yes. With the diameter. The, the saucepan, yes. Of the saucepan. Yeah. So it is useful. So, so, so it's useful so to that you know whether you need to cut them into two pieces mm -hmm. or you just need to put them all. All right. You know, yeah. So mm -hmm. you just dip them in. And something else is even if all of them doesn't get into the gravy, mm -hmm. you cover it. So then they, 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 simmer they simmer together from the steam within. Yes. And the aroma, it, it infuses. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So... I will add a little bit of water. Mm -hmm. And then I'll put my salt. Mm -hmm. To flavor. To flavor it. Salt, <laughs> the salt of the <laughs> earth. There's a role that is played by uh, salt, even biblical times. Yes. Salt is not just to flavor it, mm -hmm. not just to give it taste, mm -hmm. but also salt is used as a preservative. A preservative. And part of the, when you're wounded and mm -hmm. you put in salt. It helps. Yes. In that process of uh, healing. Yes. Uh -huh. okay. 
And of course, as uh, Christians, you're called to be the light and salt of the world. The world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So don't worry, this soup is still going to be thick mm -hmm. and nice. Uh -huh. Then, uh, what do you do? Place some cover over it. You cover it. Mm -hmm. Then you just make sure that the heat is not too, too much. Too much. Medium heat. Medium heat. Mm -hmm. And then you just give it time to simmer. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, while, while that is uh, simmering there, mm. I'd like for you to just um, talk about uh, nursing. Yes. What is involved in nursing, even in the context of a Christian who has backslid? Yes. So the first thing is not to condemn them. Mm -hmm. You remember even the fish when it's fried? Yes. It's still fish. Mm -hmm. So they, you need to... Tell, help them remember mm -hmm. that they are Christians. Yes. Then you don't need to condemn them mm -hmm. because the Bible says, "For well, now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus." But you need to point out to them that this is where you have fallen, mm -hmm. and you need to do that in love. Yes. The second thing is you need to empathize with them. Put yes. yourself in the same situation and ask yourself, "If I had fallen, what would mm. I want someone to do for me?" For me. Yeah. Yes, and, and that would actually give you an opportunity mm -hmm. to reach out to them and yes. empathize with their situation. Yes, you may not be feeling exactly what they are feeling, but, but they can identify with you. Can you can identify with them. Yes, tell them this is what is happening. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing that, you also need to be patient with them because some of them they feel so wounded and they become impatient. Mm -hmm. But you have to be patient. You have to go to them several times. You have to mask the wound. You have to take care of it. You have to persistently do so. Don't give up. Without giving up. Mm -hmm. And it is important that you address the issue. That's part of the nursing and covering of the wound mm -hmm. and giving antibiotics and, and, and uh, washing it with, uh, with antiseptic. You have to continue to wash with the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The word actually brings life yes. to the wounded. Right. And in that point, you are encouraging them. Encouraging them. And they are actually feeling okay. Now, after you have nursed them, give them the opportunity to heal. Mm -hmm. It is very important for you to give them that time to heal and to come to the realization that they had fallen and now they have been wounded. Their wound is being taken care of and now they are rising up again. They are not alone, you're walking with them. Yes. Right. And as they are healing, mm -hmm. you now need to restore them back. Restoration now comes in. Yes. You restore them back mm -hmm. into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Just as a soldier, after they have been uh, through therapy, yes. then they are restored back into mm -hmm. the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that is important. Yes. Yes. Wow. There's so much that we can talk about, even just using the symbolism of the fish. Yes. And here we're talking about the wounded soldier, restoring them, mm. in the context of a Christian who has backslid. Yes. And um, when you look at the backslid Christian, mm. when would you say that restoration is complete? Do you then leave them to go on their own? What's your responsibility? So your responsibility is to bring them back to the fold. Yes. And you will know mm -hmm. when one, they have now, they are now connecting to God. Mm -hmm. Reading the word becomes a joy to them. Mm -hmm. Coming for fellowship becomes a joy to them. They, they now don't want to sneak and, uh, and avoid. Mm -hmm. They can come back and serve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're getting involved. They're getting involved into mm. the ministry. Ministry, work. yes. They, uh, did I say prayer? Prayer becomes prayer. a joy to them. Yes. And you actually see the joy of the Lord in them, and you actually see them that, mm -hmm. of course, this is a person that is restored back to God. Mm -hmm. and, and one thing I want you to remember yes. that during this time that you are restoring back, some a, a wounded soldier. Mm -hmm. Confidentiality is also important. Very, very key. Yes. Yes. And you need to take care of them as individuals and take care of their issues confidentially, mm -hmm. so that we don't uh, like expose them. Yes. And it's very easy to expose. You know, you can say, 
Uh, let us pray for during our prayer <laughs> meeting. Yes. You write it the same. Let us pray for Brother George who has fallen into sexual immorality. And a drunkard. Yes. <laughs> or let's pray for Brother Edmond because he is nowadays a drunk. Mm -hmm. You know, you're exposing them. That's part of you are wounding them. You're wounding even further. Yes. So, and confidentiality. You're not giving them an opportunity to be restored. That's right. So, confidentiality is very important and yes. part of this being patient, you know. Mm -hmm. And now they become confident. And mm -hmm. guess what? Mm -hmm. Once you restore someone, they will also be instruments of restoring others. So, they too will yes. be channels of restoration yes. for there's, others. Yes. There's a lot of synergy that's built up together. And indeed, they in a sense, mm. become also fishers of men. Yes. Behold, we are called to be fishers of men. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow, wow. Mm. Such an interesting, exciting, and you can go on and on and on, but uh, two thing, three things are telling me mm -hmm. that something is about to happen. <laughs> there is my nostril <laughs> that is getting the aroma, it's going through the mask. There is the stomach that <laughs> is telling juices. me juices are turning. <laughs> yeah. And I can hear the simmering bubbling saying, eh, I'm ready. It's cooking. It's cooking. It's cooking. You, you said you had that, that song. Uh, oh, men are here. <laughs> men are here. But by the way, while this, we're this, teach. This, this is, this is you, you, know, you know what you're feeling now? Yes. You know when you're restoring someone, mm -hmm. you're seeing them coming up. Yes. And sometimes you go to them and you're like, uh, but we talked about this, uh, what's happening. Yes. This, this is part of patience. It, it, oh, you it is. You see them cooking. Cooking, but, but patient being patient. Until they are ready. Yes. Okay, so. Uh -huh. Wow. You see the soup is getting thicker. Thicker, yes. So this is how you, you initially it was like, uh, it was uh, a bit of, Slim and yes, it's thickening, thickening it's thickening now. It's yes. thickening. So we just need to give it a little bit more, like five minutes, mm -hmm. and it will be ready. So recapping then uh, very quickly is that uh, when you're restoring a wounded uh, soldier, mm -hmm. there is the process, and all this must uh, speak to mm -hmm. love. Yes. Empathy. Yes. Patience. Yes. Persistence. Yes. Nursing. Mm -hmm. Healing and restoration. restoration. Wow. And it's all in the process of preserving the Lord's army. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. Uh huh. I think we are done here. Wow. <laughs> that is very, very, very attracting. You see, now the soup is. Just this uh -huh. so the soup is now thick. Yes. And it's into the fish. Yes. It yeah. has permeated everywhere. Yes. Wow. So then, uh, then there is a. We will do different types. There, there, there is a. If you went, if you, if you've ever gone to Kisumu. Yes. Uh, there was a place at, by the lake shore. Mm -hmm. Where a fish was jumping from the lake. Uh-huh. <laughs> Into the frying There's a beach that uh, every time I pass near Kisumu, I have to get. I'm not you sure they're still there. You see. Wow. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, they usually, uh, they are the, mm -hmm. the aroma. The aroma. Like this. Can, you, can, you, can you just... Hmm. Right, and, 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 and while, while we are in Cook to Serve, and recall in Cook to Serve we say we nourish both the soul and the stomach. We invite comments, suggestions, and indeed share uh, the link once you've uh, watched this show, and watch it again, get the tips, get the message. Yes. And uh, how you can do this is by simply sending an email to media at nairobibaptist.co.ke Again, media at nairobibaptist.co.ke Share photographs, share comments, yes. share recipes, give us suggestions on where we can improve and how you also have uh, um, been impacted by Cook to Serve. 
Any parting shot and, and, from and, uh, Dr. George? Yeah, I, I want us to, to remember this always. Mm -hmm. Because in our Christian journey, we'll be at different levels and we'll be also given different responsibilities that we have to care for our own. Yes. And we have to remember that we are in it together. Mm -hmm. That we have to care for the wounded and we have to care for the ones who are alive. Yes. And we have to continue to walk together because we all count. Christ left the 99 to Thank count for the one. one. And so we need to remember that that one counts right. in the kingdom of God. And indeed, if you are out there watching and you need help, reach out. Reach out to us. We'll guide you. Confidentiality will be strictly maintained. Yes. And how you do it? Send an email to media at nairobibaptist.co.ke because here, when we cook to serve, we nourish not only the soul, but also the, the stomach. Body. Until Whoa. next time, we shall enjoy the fish. In the meantime, Asanteni. Stay tuned. Be blessed.